This video has been brought to you by DataVinci Analytics Agency. In this video, we are going to cover what is click tracking or link tracking in Google Tag Manager. Again, this is a very, very simple concept. So let's briefly discuss what are we going to cover in this session. All right. So the first thing is uh, pretty obvious. We are going to cover how to set up click or link tracking. All right. Next, we are going to cover how we can refine the click tracking for certain clicks only. So if we want to track the clicks on a few links, how we can do that. Then we will see how we can use CSS selectors to track almost any click. All right. And then we are going to see how we can send the information that we are tracking on a click trigger to analytics and marketing platforms. All right. So let's get started. Before moving further, I would like to invite you to join our group, the Digital Optimization League by DataVinci Analytics Agency. It's a free group and dedicated to digital analytics. We cover things like digital analytics, uh, tag management, conversion rate optimization, data visualization, or advanced data science on digital analytics uh, platforms. All right, so just send a request to join this group and I will approve it. Okay, so I am in my Google Tag Manager interface and uh, right now I am in debug mode. So before you want to start any kind of click tracking or link tracking uh, in your website, okay? So the first thing that you need to do is uh, create a click trigger or a link trigger such that it fires on all the clicks or links. So you need to create a generic link or click trigger. So it's very simple to do. You just click on, go to triggers and click on new and let's simply call it uh, generic click trigger, okay? So I'll select all elements, which is for clicks, and we'll go, we are going to see, uh, select over here all clicks. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to create a generic link click trigger as well. So generic link, sorry, link click trigger. And this is going to be all links. So just save this and refresh your debugger once and you'll refresh the page as well okay now what will happen that once you do this so wherever you click you will see these things that clicks are getting passed now okay if you click on any link so then you will see link click what's the difference between the regular click and link click so link clicks are mostly having uh, anchor tags so all these uh, navigation items they are like anchor tags okay so just uh, watch over here under summary if i click any of the links over here you will see that it shows over here link click instead of uh, a regular click okay so let me click on like DataVinci dashboards you see a link click came Otherwise, if you click on any regular uh, space, if I click anywhere over here, then it will come as click. But when I'm clicking over here, then it's coming as a link click. Right. So now let's say that we want to refine the tracking on a certain click. Let's say that if we want to track that how many times users are clicking on book a call. Okay. So how to do that? Simply click right and you will see that this trigger got fired okay this trigger got fired because we click on book a call and which is having some kind of anchor tag now when you uh, click on 13 which indicates the trigger for uh, uh, this interaction that we just had then you can go to variables and you can see that when this particular link is uh, taking place this link click is taking place then what are the values that are getting passed so uh, what are the values that are getting passed in uh, class or click element or click ID and other things. Okay. So like click text is pretty evident over here. It's coming as book a call, right? So these things you can uh, look at and based on this, you can create variables to track certain events only. So for example, we can take the variable of click text. Okay. And we can create a trigger such that only when a click happens link click happens and uh, click text is book a call then do something right so what i mean over here so if we go back to google tag manager right 
so uh, here we can create a trigger such that we can click on some link clicks right and click text it contains book or just the entire thing book a call it needs to be case sensitive right so this becomes our special trigger which is called book a call trigger now if i refresh it and go back to site so now uh, what we can do is that if anyone clicks on book a call we can send data to facebook we can send data to google analytics or we can send data to any platform that we want all right so uh, i will come to that section later on when uh, we cover how to uh, pass the data from uh, from the site to the various platforms using the click or uh, link click triggers but for now let's uh, take a use case okay so uh, you will find uh, many a times that uh, certain interactions do not have values that you can use uh, specifically for creating your uh, triggers okay and even if they have values so it will have con conflicting values so you will not be able to segregate one uh, interaction from the other so let me elaborate what i mean over here so on this site on this page you will see that there are multiple book a call buttons so there is book a call here uh, there is a book a call here there is a book a call here here right so there are multiple book a calls now let's say that you want to send this data to analytics that uh, uh, which book a call interaction is actually uh, happening are people clicking on this book a call or the other book a calls uh, if you take this approach where you will uh, note note the interaction uh, the trigger and try to find a variable so chances are very high that you might not find any variable that is uh, difference that is different when you're looking at this one as uh, compared to uh, this one okay so in that case either you can create a, a tag that fires every time when someone clicks on book a call and it just shows you overall number and you will not be able to segregate the other option is that you uh, uh, append different IDs. You need to ask your developer to append different IDs. Here you have click IDs, right? Different IDs to each one of them such that you can use that thing and separate each interaction uh, based on what you're passing over here, right? Uh, the last thing is uh, using a CSS selector but uh, the drawback is that it's dependent on the CSS so if you make any updates to the page or uh, the CSS or the page structure changes in any way then that particular uh, trigger can crash okay so the best option is always to get the IDs appended to the elements and then you can use them separately or pass some kind of data layer uh, otherwise you can use a CSS selector which will work in most cases but it can get affected at times which as I mentioned if the CSS of the page gets uh, uh, changed right so uh, how do you track something based on CSS selector so it's very easy you choose an element in this case again I'm choosing a book a call only and you inspect it okay so when you click on inspect so the element that you have inspected would get highlighted for you right so as you can see that this element has got highlighted for me now you need to click on uh, right click and just go to copy and then click on copy selector okay now what has happened is that the CSS selector for this particular button that has got copied for you so if you go back to Google Tag Manager you click on new and uh, then choose all elements all clicks no some clicks and here you have the option for choosing click element okay and here you can say matches CSS selector and whatever you have copied earlier you can paste it here okay now this is first book a call right and now let's take that use case where I mentioned that we we can pass the uh, whatever we are tracking to analytics and so uh, here what we are going to do we are going to create a tag and 
going to create a new tag and uh, first book a call clicked call it GA right so we are going to select uh, Google Analytics and this is going to be an event and the category can be link click here it can be book a call I prefer to keep label as page URL right and here in triggering we can choose first book a call and save it So let's close the debugger for now and we will open a different debugger. I use Omnibug for debugging my analytics and marketing and let's click on book a call. Okay. So as you can see, one event got fired over here, which is having the value book a call and link click. What is being shown in the debugger? Click and as you can see, first book a call clicked, right? And if we click on uh, this tag, it will show us why it got confirmed. So this is the click element which matches the CSS selector that we had put. And this condition got satisfied. That's why this, uh, this trigger resulted in firing of the tag which we sent to analytics. I took a very basic example. We can add more refinement to that. But let's look at another book of call. And now if I click on it, I do not expect the tag to fire. See, none of the tags fired. So what we can do, we can create another tag uh, based on this CSS selector. So ideally what we need to do, we can go over here and instead of uh, keeping it very generic, like link click or book a call, I can make it book a call first button and then for the second one second button third third button but I would need to create different triggers for each one of them so this is how I can refine and segregate different buttons which might have all the same properties like same CSS class or uh, ID but using CSS selectors I can separate uh, and send different information for interaction with each one of them all right now you might have a valid question that if we click on any link okay so we can also see that the click fires right so um, and the link fires so we can use either one of them we can use click or we can use link click but what is the difference between them when would you use a link click and when would you use a click all right so let's look into that so uh, if you go to triggers and uh, Let's create a new one and you uh, you know by now that to set a trigger which is based on simple click you need to go to all elements and to set a trigger that is based on links if you want to explicitly use links right which is optional but if you want to use links then you would click on just links now what's the difference now if you go to all elements you will see that you do not have any uh, additional fields other than all clicks and some clicks and by now you know that if we select some clicks then we can use any of the variables right and set the values of those variables and when a click happens then uh, google tag manager would look at the value of that variable with that click and if that value matches then it will fire a certain tag right so this is the only filtration that is uh, available with a click setting uh, but if you click on just links right you get two additional settings one is wait for tags and another is check validation all right this you do not get in uh, clicks right so what is uh, wait for tags 
So if you click on a wait for tax, you get a timeout of 2000 milliseconds. Now, uh, why would you use this and when would you use this? All right. Suppose that uh, there is a link click. Okay. That takes the user to a new page, right? Like I clicked on DataVinci dashboards and it took the user. Uh, it took me to a new page, right? Now it can happen that this migration from the previous page to the next page happens so fast that the tags do not get enough time to fire. So as soon as I click on it, a link click fires and whatever tags were associated with link click, they did not get time to fire and the page started migra uh, the migration. All right. So in such a case, what we can do, we can add some kind of wait time, like by default, it's 200, 2000 milliseconds. So if you add 2000 uh, milliseconds, then what happens that the Google tag manager would uh, add some kind of buffer uh, between the migration. So if someone would click over here, then before 2000 milliseconds, you get a bracket in which Google Tag Manager can fire those tags which are associated with it. So it adds a minute amount of lag such that the user would not feel any kind of negative effects with this lag, but it will give some time for the tags to fire. So before the tag actually starts doing its uh, ultimate objective, that is navigating the user from this page to the next page, there is some kind of buffer, additional buffer that is introduced by Google Tag Manager. And the objective of that buffer is to give Google Tag Manager, Manager enough time so that whatever tags are associated with uh, uh, this interaction get the time uh, to fire. All right. So by default, it's uh, 2000 milliseconds. You can uh, alter the setting and do some kind of trial and error if you want to, to uh, check what is the optimum setting for you. But uh, just keep in mind that if you increase this, then it would add delay and it can affect the user experience. All right. So that's the first setting, which is wait for tags. Now the second setting that is check validation. This one is uh, uh, not a very easy concept to understand and also to teach, but I will give uh, my best shot to explain to you that why this is required. All right. So uh, as soon as you click on check validation, right, you will get uh, uh, this field that uh, well, this is similar to uh, in a way, the various uh, uh, options that you get when you click on some clicks. But uh, this option gets uh, available only when you click on check uh, validation. All right. Now, uh, what happens that uh, sometimes uh, understand this thing that the objective of the web page is uh, not data tracking. So the uh, objective of this button is to schedule a call. The objective of this button is not to track interactions on schedule of call. That is the objective of the analytics in the tag manager. All right. Now, sometimes what happens is that there can be links on the page, right, which uh, might not be considered valid. All right. So uh, the uh, the developers can add certain functions to this uh, to this link that uh, uh, the the link is not considered valid if certain conditions are not satisfied. So if a user interacts on it right and uh, the developers have uh, put a code in place such that that interaction is not considered a valid uh, valid interaction so uh, they can add certain uh, scripts certain functions such that the uh, link would not act all right so uh, let's say that here there were certain form fields that were required to be filled and if those form fields were not filled and still if i click on this uh, uh, button then the developer can put a function that without the form fields, the, the link should not uh, happen. So they would put some additional scripts which would, uh, which would check for uh, validation. And mostly these scripts would have uh, uh, a statement of return false. All right. Now, if return false is, uh, has been put in place, then it would prevent the firing of uh, this tag. If you click on this uh, uh, checkbox of check validation, if you keep it unchecked, then this would not happen. But if you uh, click on uh, check validation, then you will uh, get the option to uh, uh, ensure that the tags action, the sorry, the clicks action or in the interactions action is considered a valid action. All right. Now uh, to work properly with this thing, right, you need to have a good uh, technical knowledge of how the DOM functions 
or you will need to work with your developer to ensure that uh, have they put any kind of validations over here. Most of the time, the, these validations are involved with form submissions, etc. All right. In in my experience, in almost 98 to 100 percent of the cases, you can keep this unchecked. All right. Only in rare cases, you would need to use this. Uh, you get this option over here such that uh, if you want to include this validation only on some of the link clicks, not in all link clicks, then you can uh, decide uh, choose those link clicks over here. All right. Mostly you can use some kind of page path or page URL such that the links on a certain page, uh, you, you can uh, check that they are valid links or not. And then you can uh, decide upon firing of the tags or not. All right. Now, uh, uh, these two conditions might seem similar, right? But the difference is that this condition as such uh, does not uh, depend on uh, the, the extra scripts or extra snippets uh, that the developer might pay, uh, put like return false or uh, uh, default propagation and all that. So again, this is getting a bit technical. And in most cases, you might not require it. Uh, but if, in case it happens that you feel that you have done everything right over here, right? And still, when you go to your site and you go to your preview mode and you interact with the site, you interact with the website and you see that the link click is not occurring and your tags are not firing, then one of the reasons can be that there is some kind of external script which is conflicting with Google Tag Manager and is uh, preventing the, the trigger to take, uh, from taking place. All right. So in such a case, uh, you might need to again work with your developer and find out whether there is any kind of script or not. All right. So I feel that uh, you now know that uh, how you can use uh, click tracking and link tracking triggers in Google Tag Manager to set your various tags. Uh, what I have covered so far should be good enough to cover 90 to 95 percent of the cases. And uh, I think for any course or any tutorial, that's the limitation that uh, some things would come with experience only. We cannot cover uh, each and every case. All right. So hope this uh, tutorial was helpful. Take care.